Infinity Sunday. The epistle for, to be back here in New Jersey, Sparta. And we have also today the few First Communions. And the epistle today is taken, for the Trinity Sunday, is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 11. O oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and of the knowledge of God! How incomprehensible are His judgments, and how unsearchable His ways! For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been His counselor? Or who hath first given to Him, and recompense shall be made, made Him? For of Him, and by Him, and in Him are all things. To Him be glory forever. Amen. And in the Gospel, taking that according to St. Matthew, chapter 28. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, All power is given to me in heaven and on earth. Going therefore, teach ye all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all days, even to the consummation of the world. That's for the words of today's Holy Gospel. Today we have this feast, the sacred feast of the Holy Trinity, the most principal dogma and doctrine of our holy faith, the center of everything, the Alpha and the Omega of our faith. And we have also today the receiving of Holy Communion. And a few considerations here taken in part from St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Basil. And this mystery of faith. You know that when God made the world, He made the whole world, all things for Himself. So as the book of Proverbs, I am a selfish God, I have made all things for Myself. And therefore, all these things also are not only made for God, but they're made out of nothing. Made for His glory. And that the rocks are made out of nothing by God, the angels are made out of nothing by God. The men are made out of nothing by, for, by God. And the same is true of other things. All things, rocks and angels and animals and men, are made for the glory of God. That's why we're here. That's why we say, for instance, in the beginning of the Catechism, uh, that uh, who made you? God made me. Why did God make you? God made me to show forth His goodness. And to that I might know Him, Love Him and serve Him in this world so that I might be happy with Him in the next. So I was made to know, love, and serve God. This knowing, loving, and serving equals three things that are one. When St. Patrick went to see the Irish, when all the saints went to see those who wanted to follow, were, found themselves in great sin, was one of the first things they told them. You must believe in the true God. And if you do not believe in the true God, you will be damned. Anyone who does not believe in the true God is going to hell. And you must receive the sacrament of faith. What is the sacrament of faith? Baptism. It gives us faith. And then, after baptism, then what? We need to be strengthened in that faith because we become weak. And so a, faith, a sacrament that strengthens that faith is a sacrament of, and because of our weakness, because of our sins, a sacrament of penance. Then we need to be strong in that faith, soldiers of that faith, carrying that faith to souls. Therefore, we get the sacrament of confirmation. And then we need to be captains, leading souls in faith. And so we get the sacrament of holy orders. For some, for those that are captains in God's army, who are leaders of the faith, teachers and instructors of the faith. Then there are those that are going to bring the faith into new souls that are coming into the world. This is the sacrament of marriage. And then when we die, we are supposed to have faith and receive the blessings of faith that we're going to carry us into the kingdom of heaven, where there is no longer faith but vision. And this is the sacrament of extreme unction. And then there is a sacrament that is the center of them all, by which we make the greatest act of faith. And that is the sacrament of the blessed of the Holy Eucharist, the great sacrament by which we receive God, God the Son, comes inside of us. And His body and His blood and His soul and divinity is there on the altar. His body and blood and soul and divinity is in the Mass. 
And his body and blood and soul and divinity holds together the whole of the mystical body of Christ. And we are able to eat and consume that body, blood, soul, and divinity. And so we make an act of faith. The faith must be strengthened inside of us. The faith must be received. The faith must be carried. And this faith we receive in a most sacred way when we receive God himself. God made man in the Blessed Sacrament. And today we have this feast of the Holy Trinity. And we believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Three persons and one God. And St. Thomas Aquinas tells us, who does not explicitly believe in the Blessed Trinity, must go to hell. There is no replacement for it. It is one of the four necessary truths that we must explicitly believe in order to go to heaven. The first two are obvious to all men. We're the Creator and the Remunerator. You know one reason why we baptize babies? Why babies must be baptized? And they must be baptized as soon as possible because babies cannot make an act of faith. The act of faith must be made for them by the sponsors or by the, the, the parents. And they cannot make an act of faith and therefore if a baby dies who has never committed a single sin, the baby goes to limbo. The baby cannot go to heaven because he has not made an act of faith. And that is why the church says you must bring the baby to the priest quam primum as soon as possible because he must receive the baptism. He must be entered into Christ. He must have the original sin taken away. He cannot make an act of faith. And therefore the priest pours water over his head. And what does he say? I baptize thee. I wipe away thy sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. You hear that name. And when that name is heard, and notice it is not the names of the Father. The Phenites often say, you say there cannot be three baptisms because God said there's only one baptism. And there is one baptism. And these three are one. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. <coughs> The three that give testimony on earth, says St. John. And he says, these three that give testimony on earth are same as the three that give testimony in heaven, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And as there is one God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, so there is one baptism, water, desire, and blood. And these three are one. Therefore, it is the name of the Father, and not the names of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And there's a baptism of water, and the baptism of desire, and the baptism of blood, but these three are one. And this sacrament of faith, what does it give us? It gives us the blessed trinity, which is the principal dogma of our faith. And it's the principal reality upon which all reality hinges. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost said, let there be light, and that's why there is light. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost said, make sure that God the Son became man, the second person of us is trinity, by the command of the Father who would send the Holy Ghost. And these three are equal. These three are one. The Father is not greater who sent the Son. The Son is not greater who sent the Holy Ghost along with the Father. These three are one. And yet there are three different persons. And so there are three that are one. And we are the religion of God. The only religion of God. There is only one God. And this God is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And our purpose is to praise that Father, praise the Son, and praise the Holy Ghost. All of the creatures were made by God for His glory. But what's the difference between these creatures? How we give glory to God. Man was meant to give glory to God by his mind, by his will, and by his body. And these three are one. These three are connected in one man, by which we know God by our faith. We love God in our hearts, and we serve God with our bodies. And the heart follows the mind, for we love God according to how we know Him, as He really is. And the body follows the mind and the heart, by which it worships God. We worship God with our bodies when we make the sign of the cross. Our bodies accept the Trinity. And this Trinity is the beginning of all. So when St. Patrick went to Ireland, and he saw these simple pagan people who could not read, you know that when we study Catholic theology, 
The most difficult part of theology is called De Deo Trino, about God, the trend of the triune God. It's the most difficult part by which we learn that there are five notions in God. Innashability, active uh, paternity, filiation, spiration, active spiration, passive spiration, and, and, and the, uh, uh, the, 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 the fifth notion, the, all these five notions of the Blessed Trinity. And they're very difficult for us to understand. And one day St. Augustine studying these five notions, and the four relations, and the three persons, and the two processions, and the one nature, thought he had a great understanding of God, and was very proud of his understanding of God, that he had finally come to an understanding of the Blessed Trinity. And one day, a boy he saw upon the shore, and Augustine, St. Augustine was walking along the shore, and he saw a boy in the sand, and he had a little cup. And the boy went over to the sea, and he put water into the cup, and he went to a little hole about the size of a rabbit hole, and he poured it into the hole. And he went back to the sea and back to the hole. And St. Augustine asked the boy, What are you doing? He said, I'm taking that ocean, and I'm putting it in this hole. And Augustine said, It's impossible. And the boy said to Augustine, Augustine, it is easier for me, a boy, to take all the water in the seven seas and pour it into this hole than it is for you to understand the Trinity. And the boy disappeared. The boy was Christ. And what do we say in the gospel today, or in the epistle? Who can understand the ways of God? We don't understand His ways, we adore them. We don't understand His ways, we believe them. We don't understand His ways, we follow them. We know some things about His ways. He lets us a little bit of revelation here and there. And for all eternity we will contemplate His ways. For all eternity we'll think of this Father, and see this Father, and see the Son, and see the Holy Ghost. To try to understand what is fatherhood, what is sonhood, and what is the Holy Ghost, the Blessed Trinity. When we see this faith, it is a great abomination that in our church today, and in the world today, souls no longer believe really and truly in the Blessed Trinity. They no longer really believe in it. They say that the Jews, for instance, the Pope, the last several popes have told us, since Vatican II, that the Jews worship the same God as we do. And this is a blasphemy and a lie, because they do not worship God the Son. They do not worship God the Son made man. They do not recognize that He is, a say, he is one of the same substance as the Father, one of the same substance as the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And they say we worship the same God. The Jews worship Satan. They do not worship God. And all those that worship any God besides a triune God, they worship Satan. And anyone who says he worships a triune God, but does not believe in his church, also worships Satan. He does not worship the truth. He is following Satan. Like our Lord Jesus Christ said to the Jews, If you're the sons of Abraham, do the works of Abraham. But your father is the devil. Their father used to be God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. He was the God of Abraham. God the Father, the God of Isaac, God the Son, and the God of Jacob, God the Holy Ghost. This was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But this God the Jews turned away from. And that is why Christ said to the Jews who had the true religion of the Old Testament, you are servants of your father, the devil. Now we know as followers of the God the Father, and God the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that there are really only two fathers. There is God the Father, and there is the devil, who is not really a father, because a father generates life. A father creates. And God, the devil cannot generate life, and the devil cannot create. He can only lie. Which is why we call him the father of lies. All false religions are lies. All heresies are lies. All things that are not in the proper relationship to the world that God created as he created it, are lies, and is a liar who believes those things. All, false, all falsity is a lie. And all lies are beginning to follow the father of lies and are stepping away from the true father who is the father of the truth, the father of the word, who was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we saw his glory. And what are we to do as human beings? We are to praise the glory of God. The time is coming when all that will be necessary to become a martyr is to say, I believe in the father and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one God, and the only God, and all others are devils, and all others are liars. When we receive this great sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, 
It is to strengthen the faith. Our Lord Jesus Christ comes inside of our bodies when we receive Holy Communion in order to strengthen our faith. That is why He makes Himself invisible to our eyes. He makes Himself invisible to our eyes to see, do you really believe that I am He? Do you believe that when I said, my flesh is food indeed, my blood is drink indeed, that I really am food indeed, that I really am drink indeed? Do you really believe the same Jesus Christ who stood in front of Martha, St. Martha. And Martha said, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother would not have died. And what did our Lord say? Whoever believes in me shall not taste death forever. Believest thou this? God demands belief. And we are in a time, we must choose. Do we believe? Did Martha really believe? Because her brother was dead four days and Christ spoke to him, to her. Did she believe? Could she not say, My brother believed in you, he's dead four days. Don't tell me who believes in you shall not die, because he's dead four days. But Christ demanded, Dost thou believe or not? And we are in an age we must decide, Do we really believe? Our Lord has given us a few tests, like he gave Abraham a test. Abraham, do you believe? Do you believe I'm the God that commanded you to go out of Ur of Chaldees? Do you believe that I am the God that blessed you? Do you believe I am the God that gave you all the benefits, the material and spiritual that you've ever received? Do you believe I am the God who gave you the visions of the future by which you would see my only son? Abraham saw the days of Christ. Do you believe I am that God? Do you believe I'm the God that gave you Isaac, your son? Do you really believe? Yes, Lord, I believe. Then go and take that son and kill him. And so he took his son without question. And God saved the son, Isaac. And God showed to all of us the beauty and power of what faith is. Faith is not a compilation of catechism questions. Faith is not a belief like something that we believe that's true because we, we, we read about it and we think it's right. Faith is a combination of the absolute unity and certitude of our faith with our hearts. And our faith with our hearts and our bodies. Which is why it says in sacred scripture, the just man lives by faith. And the Council of Trent speaks of this faith against the heretical Protestant faith, which is some kind of a separated faith that has nothing to do with, with, with charity and nothing to do with hope. When it says in sacred scripture the just man lives by faith, it means that faith is not only beliefs, but it enters into his heart. His heart makes an active will that I believe because of the authority of God revealing. And the principal thing we believe is the Blessed Trinity. And that is why St. Patrick came to those Irish. There are three persons in one God. How can there be three persons in one God? Why is it not three persons and three gods? And he picked up a three-leaf clover. And he said, do you see this clover? How many clovers are there? And they said, one. How many leaves has it? And they said, three. There are three leaves, but there is only one clover. So likewise, there are three persons, but only one God. And that clover leaf became the symbol of the Irish. Because through the picture of that clover leaf, they believed in the Trinity. And when they believe in the Trinity, they receive the Mass. And they receive the Catholic faith. And they received the Blessed Virgin Mary. And they received the Holy Mother of the Church. And they received the gift of joy. And they received all the virtues that come from God. And they received all the beautiful things that God gave to the land of Ireland. Every detail, right down to good beer. They received all of it from that belief that the, the three leaves is one clover. And three persons is one God. Before then, they drank ugly, horrible uh, garbage whiskey. <laughs> but after that, everything changed. It is this belief in the three persons in one God that changes everything. It changes all things. Therefore, St. Thomas Aquinas says, no man can go to heaven who does not explicitly believe in the supernatural belief in the Blessed Trinity. And then if someone dies, say a pygmy in Africa, or someone in South America or in Asia before the times of the missionaries who come and teach them the truth. What will God do if they accept the grace of God? He will send an angel at their deathbed, those that have accepted the grace. 
And he will tell them that you have seen sin all around you. And they have seen sin. They all know that God is a creator. They all know that God is a rewarder. But he will say that, that there is sin in the world. And, and man has sinned. And I have sinned. And we have all sinned. Each one knows that. The sin must be taken away. It can only be taken away by the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. And St. Thomas Aquinas says, why always believe in the Trinity? He gives a very simple reason. He says that, God, we cannot be saved without recognizing Christ redeemed our sins. And we cannot believe in Christ's redemption unless we believe in the Trinity. Our Lord Jesus Christ is not one who just simply was a good and holy man. Who was not one who was a great prophet. He is God who became man. And had He not been God who became man, His blood would not have saved us. It is because it is God's blood, and not only man's blood, that is on the cross, that we are saved, that He is truly God and truly man. How can we believe in Jesus Christ who does not believe in the Trinity? You know that the Muslims claim they believe Jesus Christ. They claim they believe in Him. They say He's a great prophet. They are enemies of our Lord. And they kill the followers of Christ. And they are, the, they are worshipers of Satan when they worship Allah. But they claim they believe in Christ. They claim He was a great prophet. But Jesus Christ was not a great prophet. Jesus Christ is God made man. And St. Thomas says, No man can go to heaven without the explicit belief in the Trinity because you cannot believe in Christ's redemption unless you believe that He is God the Son. And you cannot believe He is God the Son unless you know that there is a God the Father. And you cannot believe in God the Son unless you know He sent the Holy Ghost. And therefore you must believe explicitly in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And furthermore, St. Bonaventure adds, and St. Thomas, I believe, quotes him, but St. Bonaventure adds, in order to go to heaven, we were made for a supernatural world God could have made us in a natural world, but He didn't. He didn't have to give us grace. He didn't have to give us supernatural life, but He did. And since He made us in a supernatural world, we cannot attain the supernatural benefit of heaven without making a supernatural act. You want to go to the supernatural place called heaven? You must make a supernatural act. And St. Bonaventure says, we must have the aqua in, in, in voto, we must have the water in desire, but we must have the faith in ray. The fides must be in ray. And if we don't make an actual, a supernatural act of faith, and this faith is, I believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And that these three are one. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. And all from these two beliefs comes everything else. The Blessed Virgin Mary, who was the mother of God. The mystical body of Christ, which is the Holy Catholic Church. The Twelve Articles of the Creed. And all the things taught by our Holy Church down the last 2,000 years. It's all contained in those two truths. That Jesus Christ is God made man, dying on the cross for our sins. And that there is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And we are in a great battle. Between the glory of God and the glory of man. Or rather, the glory of God and the glory of Satan. Because Satan demands to be glorified. Satan demands to be worshipped. That is why he prepares souls always to do their human sacrifices for his glory, such as the sacrifice of abortion, which is for the glory of Satan. And the other deliberate human sacrifices that are being done every day in the United States of America by Satanists and in other places in the world as well. The killing of babies for human sacrifices is Satan. He recognizes the necessity of glory, and Satan wants to usurp this glory for himself. But God said, we must give the glory to him. What did the angels say when Jesus Christ became visible on Christmas Day, in the middle of the night? What was the first word that they said to the shepherds? Gloria in excelsis Deo. And in fact, this is the first purpose of the priest, to give glory to God. He is to make sure that in the name of all men he gives glory to God. And this cannot be done without the removal of sin, because sin is an enemy to that glory. And therefore he has the power to forgive sins. He has the power to bring Christ upon the altar. And all this flows from the blessed Trinity. And do we believe? Because God reveals. We believe because God reveals. He says, 
that he is in the blessed sacrament, and therefore we believe it, because of the power of his word, who can neither deceive nor be deceived. He says, I must kneel down in front of a priest. We had our first confessions today. First confessions, since the door was locked, the first confessions were at the car, kneeling on a kneeler in front of a car. So that was confessions because the sins are on the go. The sins have to go. So remember your first confession, right? You kneel down and go to confession because sins have to go. They have to go. That's the purpose of confession. So we do, but the sins must be forgiven so that we can receive Christ. And so that the sins can be forgiven by the priest who says, who sins, as the Lord said to the priest, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them. Whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. Why is that true? Because God the Son said it's true. And whatever God the Son says, we believe. And if He said, you must eat my flesh, we eat His flesh. Why? Because God the Son said, eat His flesh. And so that we're going to eat His flesh. And if He said, that the, who hears you, hears me, then we will listen to the priests. Whenever they say the same teaching the church has always taught, and the same God said to the mouth of St. Paul, if these high teachers, the bishops or the angels of heaven, teach you something different than what we have already taught you, let him be anathema. Therefore, we do not believe in any new teaching. We believe in the teachings that are handed down by Christ. Why? Because of the blessed Trinity. Because God is God. God created the world. God founded the holy religion of Adam, the holy religion of Moses, the holy religion of Christ, which is the same religion. In three different phases. Same religion. And so he will also come to judge the living and the dead. When God the Son becomes man again. Or comes back to the earth as man and as king. Do we really believe in the Trinity? We do. And we must. Therefore we say in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen means so be it. Amen means let it be. That we believe in whatever it says. Finished. That's why St. Paul says in the, in the epistle today, to him the glory to the Father, Son, Holy Ghost forever. Amen. Nothing more to be said. Nothing more to be done. We're here to give glory to God. And God made man a rational creature. God gave man free will. This is what makes us different from the animals. A dog always gives glory to God. The animals always give glory to God. But they are not related to God in a sacred and special way. Whereas we learn in the book of Genesis... God said these words, Let us, plural, make man according to our, our own image, singular, and likeness. And so He made them. He made man. He, us, made man according to His own image and likeness. Let us make man according to our own image and likeness. And therefore He made man according to His own image and likeness. His is one, us is plural. Therefore, from the beginning, He is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, who created Adam in His own image and likeness. And St. Bonaventure tells us, there is Trinity inside of man. There is Trinity inside of the rocks. There is Trinity inside of all things. A triunity, because God left His stamp. That three things will be one. And the devil leaves his stamp, which is that all things that are one will be ripped apart. The devil comes into one family, it becomes a broken family. The devil comes into a nation, it becomes a destroyed nation. The devil comes into a man, it becomes a ripped apart and divided man. But when God comes in, the many things come together. The three are one. And all the seven sacraments, these sacred sacraments, are to strengthen our faith. And they come from God, who instituted these sacraments. And this most blessed sacrament... These little ones received today the body and the blood and the soul and the divinity of Jesus Christ. And when they receive that divinity, they will receive also the Father and the Holy Ghost. The Father and the Holy Ghost are here. The Son will come physically into their body, the body and blood of Him. But the Father and the Holy Ghost will also be here. For there are these are always coming together. And the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ said, The Father and I are one. And we can never accept any division in our holy faith. Therefore, we never separate the cross from the Trinity. What did those missionaries do in England? Visiting the tower. They took the Trinity and they made the sign of the cross with stones and whatever they had on the cells before they died. And so these saints, before they were hung, drawn, and quartered, which is what the devil does, 
hung, drawn, and quartered. And they were hung, drawn, and quartered by man. And they were united to God. We must have a strong faith. This is an age in which we must return to the simple faith of the apostles. And the simple faith of those souls who went into persecution. And that is the faith that we are the only ones who are the followers of Jesus Christ in His true, holy, Roman, unchanging Catholic Church, which is, which is a one holy Catholic and apostolic. We are members of that one church with those dogmas that never change. We hold what our fathers always held. And why do we hold it? Because the one God, who is three in one, gave this religion to us. And we believe everything because of this one God. And we must return to the sacredness of the truth of the Blessed Trinity. As St. Thomas says, as all the saints of his time, St. Bonaventure, etc., say that we must explicitly believe in this Holy Trinity. And that is why the missionaries went throughout the world to let people know you must believe in the Holy Trinity. You must believe in Jesus Christ. You must accept this Holy Church or you will be damned forever. St. Francis Xavier wrote a letter back to Europe about India. And he said, There are few souls that pass from India to heaven because they know not Christ. Therefore he was driven by fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost, to carry Jesus Christ, to carry the Father of God, the Father of Jesus Christ, who is the Father and the Holy Ghost throughout India. And that is what he was there to do. And the modern missionaries have forgotten that. What are we here for? And these modern fools study too much modern psychologists. They study too much modern psychiatry and modern thinking. When we, are, we have the answer to all the troubles of the world by bringing the seal of the Holy Trinity. Let it be sealed with the Holy Trinity. The bishop has on his ring a seal. It is called the seal of an unfeigned faith. This is the seal of the Holy Trinity. And he is supposed to stamp every soul with that seal. We kiss the ring of the bishop. It is a seal of the Holy Trinity. And now the ring bishops don't want their rings to be kissed because they don't believe in the seal of the Holy Trinity. They don't believe in Christ's teaching as he's told us in the prodigal son and in the other teachings of the gospel. They don't believe in it. They don't believe in the necessity of the seal of the Holy Trinity. Remember how in olden times the king would wear a ring with a seal on it so that no one could take it from him. And whenever he made a decree, he would seal the wax of the letter of his decree. And if you saw the seal of the wax, you knew that was a decree from the king. If we did not see the seal of the king, it was not from the king and not to be followed. And we look for the seal of the Holy Trinity. I sign you with the chrism of salvation. We say it at the sacrament of confirmation. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And when you are anointed, in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. And when you receive absolution, in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. When you come before the priest to be blessed, the stole is put over the hands of the couple. I conjoin you in holy matrimony. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. And when you bring a rosary to be blessed, in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti, you know we're allowed to do the missionary blessing. Because of the time of Christ, missionaries don't even have to say the prayers. We can skip the prayers. And what do we do? We want to bless something. The bishop does it often. We just make the sign of the Holy Cross, the sign of the Blessed Trinity, and it is blessed. We don't even have to say the prayers in the ritual. We can skip them if we need to. But we cannot skip the Holy Cross. And we cannot skip the Blessed Trinity. This is the sign that blesses rosaries, the sign that blesses houses, the sign that blesses souls, the sign that blesses all things, that blesses our holy religion. And that sign is in this great sacrament. And when we bless the scapulars of the children after Mass today, we will say prayers, but it will not be blessed until it receives the sign of the Holy Cross. The sign of the Blessed Trinity. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, it will be blessed. And when we come to souls that are possessed of the devil, in the name of Jesus Christ, I say to thee, go out. And he is driven out in the name of the Trinity. We are the carriers of the blessed Trinity. The stamp of the Trinity is in the priesthood. The stamp of the Trinity is in baptism. The stamp of the Trinity is in confirmation. The stamp of the Trinity is his most blessed sacrament. And this Trinity must be in the marriage. In the holy sacredness of marriage. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Why? Because of the Trinity. There is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three can never be separated. And therefore, if God has joined together this man with that woman, let no man put it asunder. All the divorce courts in the world can say all the decrees they want, but they cannot divide what God has joined together. It cannot be done. 
And you can get an annulment paper like putting money in a Coke machine. It cannot be done. It's true there are legitimate annulments, which means that there was no real marriage in the beginning. In which case, the union of the Trinity never happened. The stamp of the Trinity never happened. But where the stamp of the Trinity happens, there can be no separation. Do we believe in this Holy Trinity or not? And even if we do not, He is still God. He will still judge the devil. He will still damn the souls who do not believe in Him. He will still make the souls in fire burn because of His wrath. He will make the souls in heaven rejoice because of His glory and because of His, His happy, His great mercy. It is a trinity that is the Alpha and the Omega. And St. Thomas says we must believe explicitly. Modern theologians in the last recent century say we all don't have to believe in it explicitly, only implicitly. St. Thomas, St. Bonaventure, all the saints of the Middle Ages say no. We must have an explicit belief in this supernatural. Do we believe the supernatural is real or not? God retouches all natural things with the supernatural grace. The supernatural touches the gold of the chalice when the blood, the precious blood, touches it. The supernatural touches the rosary. The supernatural touches these things. When a house is blessed, the devil comes into a house and the priest touches it with supernatural with the holy water and he says the prayer and drives the devil out. The devil comes with his preternatural wickedness and God comes with his supernatural goodness. And we are in a great war between the father of lies and the father of all creation. And our purpose is to give Him glory. There are many saints, like St. Dismas, and many who would follow Him, who did only one good act in their entire life, just before they died. And all they did was give glory to God from their hearts. For one moment. That's enough to be saved. Like St. Saint Vianney spoke of the lady who 40 years her husband beat her, 40 years her husband was a drunk, Forty years her husband was wicked, and she gladly took the pain of a wicked husband so that he might repent. But then he despaired and jumped off a bridge and committed suicide. She went to St. John of Vianney. said, I suffered for my husband, and I happily suffered so that he might be saved, but he committed suicide. And St. John of Vianney said, Your prayer was heard. Between the bridge and the water, he made an act of repentance. Between the bridge and the water, he gave glory to the Holy Trinity. Between the bridge and the water, he said he was sorry, and he made one good act for which he was saved. The 40th holy martyr was a Roman soldier who was a wicked man murdering 40 men because they loved God. And what happened? One of them was a coward and got off the ice and he went to get in warm water and was killed by the justice of God. And what did that soldier do? He said, I will take his place. And he did one good act and he is now a saint. What is the essential act that we must make to make the praise of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost in our minds, by which we know Him, in our hearts, by which we love Him, in our bodies, by which we serve Him, usque ad mortem, until death. And when these three are one, we are saints. That is what a saint is. Who perfectly unites the knowledge and the love and the service in one perfect act, of which they can never be separated. And our trouble in our life is it's too divided. The triunity is not there. We know and we do something different. Like St. Paul says in Romans chapter 7, My mind knows the truth. I follow the Spirit. But then I go away. My flesh is weak. My spirit does one thing and my flesh does another. And when we become saints, we get pulled together. So let's pray that we become saints who are living inside of the Blessed Trinity. And remember all that heaven is. See God face to face. Receive Him perfectly. And so this Holy Communion that we receive today it's the beginning of heaven. And then we get the perfection of it later. And when you receive this Holy Communion afterwards, we will have the blessing of the scapular because no one can receive Jesus Christ without also receiving Mary. And so after the Mass, we have the blessing of the scapular by which you clothe yourself as to be always belonging to the Holy Mother of God. And then she will be your protection. She will be your shield. Now they have electronic shields for your houses. you got bulletproof glass. you got all kinds of stupid shields and they don't work. But the shield of the scapular, it is unstoppable. It cannot be penetrated. It is the shield for us. And let's have, have that great shield. We believe in the shield of the scapular. We believe in the shield of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We believe in the shield of our holy faith because we believe in that God who is three and one. Bless you all, in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.